Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. Now in this video, we are gonna be comparing two of the most popular models from Iceco. The original Iceco VL45, I purchased this around three years ago, it's still going strong and the upgraded Iceco VL45 Pro. Now, in this video, we're gonna talk about the performance numbers for these, we're gonna talk about the sound levels, we're gonna talk about the actual features and how they are similar and how they are different. So hopefully by the end of the video, you'll be able to make a decision on which fridge is right for you. Now, if you guys haven't heard of Iceco before, they offer an excellent value in the 12 volt compressor fridge market. For example, instead of spending around $1,100 to $1,200 for a fridge of this size, you could pick up one of these Icecos for around $600 to $500. Now, that doesn't mean that you're missing out on efficiency or reliability. These fridges have CCOP compressors in them with a five year warranty. Now, Iceco was kind enough to offer you guys, my viewers, with a 12% off discount code. I'll include that down in the video description. So if you guys like what you see, you can purchase one of these fridges using that discount code. Thank you guys for watching. Let's go ahead and jump into the comparison. Now when comparing these fridges side by side, they do have the same advertised internal capacity of 47 and a half quarts, but they do accomplish it a little bit differently. The VL45 is a little bit taller and more narrow, and the VL45 Pro is shorter and wider. Now I'll throw up some images from Iceco's website for the internal and external dimensions for these fridges. Just be aware the VL45 comes in at 48 pounds, and the VL45 Pro is a little bit heavier at 50 pounds. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of each fridge to see how they're different. Now starting with the VL45, this is an open chest style design with one zone, so there are no dividers. And whatever temperature you set on the display will be the temperature inside the fridge. Now Iceco has placed the temperature sensor on the middle area of the fridge because in a chest style fridge like this, you have a little bit of variation between the temperature. So the bottom is going to be really cold because the cold air goes to the bottom. So just keep that in mind. That's the case for any chest style design. Now the inside of the fridge is lined with metal and that's really efficient. There is a bright LED light that allows you to see all your food in the dark. Now there are two removable baskets. The benefit to that is when this gets fully weighed down, it can weigh 100 pounds, it's really hard to move by yourself. So if you take each basket out, you can move the fridge by yourself and then put the baskets back in. So just a very simple design on the VL45. Now moving on with the VL45 Pro, this is a very similar design. The entire inside is lined with metal, so it's efficient there. This also has a bright LED light so you can see your food in the dark. Now this one only has one basket, so it's a little bit different from the VL45, and the temperature sensor is on the back instead of being on the shelf. Now this also has a drain plug, which is an additional feature over the VL45, so just keep that in mind, it's a little bit easier to clean this out. You can kind of spray some water in here and then let it drain out and then wipe it dry. These are not waterproof, so I do not recommend filling it with ice or water, but it does allow you to spray it down and drain the water out. So very simple design in this one here. Now, one of the main differences between these two fridges are the lid and latch design. For example, on the VL45, you have this massive thick lid here. You have two metal latches on the front. They're easy to use and they do a really good job holding down the lid tight. And if we go to open this up, you'll notice there's a very large rubber gasket and it lines up really well with the inside of the fridge. So with the rubber gasket and the thick lid, this one is kind of built around efficiency. Now it's not removable and it only opens from one direction. Now looking at the VL45 Pro, this one is kind of built with convenience in mind. If you'll notice, it is definitely a thinner lid, but it has a handle on both sides. You can open it from this side and you can open it from this side, or if you pull both the handles at the same time, you can completely remove the lid. So a little bit less efficient, but very much convenient. So there are places where this can be used Either you have a low clearance area where you can't really open the lid all the way up, or you have an area where you don't wanna to have to orient the fridge in a certain way, you can open it from either angle. So uh, lots of convenience on this one, and this one's built with more efficiency in mind. Now in the next section of the video, I wanna talk about the fridge control panels on each one and the power inputs, because they do differ a little bit. On the VL45, it has a very simple control panel. You can adjust the battery protection settings. You can change the compressor setting from eco or max mode, and you can also adjust the temperature by pushing up and down. So very simple, easy to use. And for your power inputs, you have your DC input and your AC input. 
Now just be aware, both of these fridges have the AC to DC conversion built inside. So if you run them off AC power, there are no external wall bricks. Basically, you just have a AC power cable that these come with and a DC power cable that these come with. So that's nice there. Now moving to the VL45, it's a little bit different. The display is updated a little bit. You still have your battery protection settings. You still have the adjustment for your eco or max mode. You can also adjust the temperature by pushing up and down to get the desired temperature inside. But below that, you have some kind of these weatherproof covers. You have your DC input, you have your AC input, and you have two USB ports that are powered whenever this is running off 12 volts or AC wall power. So it, it is nice that you have those USB ports. The other thing that's a benefit about this is you have your DC input on this side. So the fridge actually has two DC inputs. So wherever your power source is closer, you can plug it in there. Now let's go ahead and break down the power consumption numbers for both of these fridges. Now as a disclaimer, the results I got on these tests are intended to be used as a rough guideline because the results will vary depending on your ambient temperature, the humidity level in your area, the fridge set point temperature, and basically how much food is actually in the fridge. Now for the VL45, whenever it's not running and you're just powering up the display, it pulls around one watt of power. When you have it set to eco mode and the compressor is running, it pulls around 32 watts. And when you have it set to max mode, it pulls around 47 watts. Now for the VL45 Pro S, to power up the display it takes around two watts of power and that's when the compressor is not running. If you have it set to eco mode and the compressor is running, it pulls around 34 watts. And then on max mode, when the compressor is running, it pulls around 49 watts. Now I like to test these fridges in two different temperatures. One is in my basement office where it's 70 degrees most of the time and I have them running off AC wall power with an inline watt meter for 24 hours to track how much power they use. Now the fridges are set to 36 degrees during this test. Now for the next test, I put both of these fridges in a small closet with a heater, and I try to get the temperature right around 85 degrees ambient and track it over 24 hours to see how much power they pull at a warmer temperature. Now to look at the results, I'll throw a graph up on the screen. So at the bottom, you have the 70 degree test, the 85 degree test, and then I do an estimation at 103 degrees, estimating if the compressor were to run 100% of the time. Now there are three different fridges in this test to give you guys some variation. I have the VL45, the VL45 Pro S, and the VL60 Pro S, just to show you that a larger fridge uses a little bit more power. So what is this graph telling us? Well, we basically learned that the VL45 is the most efficient fridge here, and it probably has to do with the thicker lid and the slightly thicker walls with the insulation there. However, the VL45 Pro S is not far behind. It's still a very efficient fridge, and the VL60, even jumping up to a larger size, doesn't use that much more power. Now, I've included all this information in a new spreadsheet tab on my portable power station grading sheet. If you head to the bottom and click on the 12 volt fridge comparison page, it opens up a new tab and shows you all the detailed testing information for any fridge that I've tested on the channel. Now, I thought it'd be helpful to test how loud each of these fridges are. This is what the VL45 Pro sounded like. And this is what the VL45 sounded like. Now the VL45 did have a little bit louder fan and that's why you could see it had higher decibels. Now for all the fridge reviews I like to do, I like to take off the faceplate so we can see the build quality inside and to see which compressor it's using. Now this fridge is using the CCOP BD35F compressor and CCOP compressors are known for their reliability. Now right here you have your main control board and you can see all the wires going off into the controller for the compressor and you do have an inline fuse on your main DC input. So if you plug in your fridge with DC power and nothing happens, you might have blown this fuse. Now the last thing I noticed here is you have your condenser coil over here and you have this large piece of foam with a cutout for the fan. So it looks like this foam actually isolates some of the heat from the condenser coil. So that'll help keep the compressor a little bit cooler. So overall, really good design. It uses a great compressor. Let's go ahead and close everything up here and then we'll go ahead and tear down the VL45. Now taking a look at the VL45, one thing you'll notice is there is an external fuse down here where you plug in your power input, so a little bit easier maintenance there. Let's go ahead and take off this front panel. Now with the screws removed, we can go ahead and remove this panel. I'm just going to go ahead and lay it down right here. Okay, so first impressions, definitely a little bit neater cable management. You have this wire loom on most of your wires. Now this fridge is also using the CCOP BD35F compressor, so it should have the same reliability. Now the layout of the VL45 is similar to the Pro. You have your fan and your condenser coil here on the right hand side. 
Now, when talking about the durability of both these models, they both have exterior metal frames. They have these metal supports where the compressor area is located and the bottom of the fridge is actually metal. Now, when talking about how the compressor is mounted to the bottom, they have rubber isolators that help dampen some of the vibration. So both of these fridges are very durable. Okay, well now that we've talked about the similarities and differences with the feature set, we've also talked about the actual performance and power consumption, let's go ahead and break down the price for each of these models. Now on IceCo's website, you can pick up the standard VL45 for $559, and on their website, you can pick up the Pro model for $699. Now I do have the 12% off discount code that you guys can use. And it brings the price down for the standard model a little bit under $500. And this one comes in at around $615. So there's probably about $120 difference between these two fridges. So you have to ask yourself, is it worth going for the more expensive model because it has the better features? I really like the lid on this one. It has the drain plug. You get the USB ports and it has that additional power port for DC input. So you do get a lot of features for that extra money. Or do you wanna go with a more simple design that's slightly more efficient? So basically guys, that decision's up to you. Hopefully after watching this video, you have a direction that you're kind of leaning to. Now, one thing that would be awesome is if any of you guys own one of these fridges, throw a comment down below and give us some feedback. Let us know which one you like and why you chose that one. And maybe that would be some good uh, feedback for others that are looking to purchase one of these fridges. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you like this video and hopefully we'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you later.